Amen. God has just continued to be so good to us. It is, it's just so cool to see, you know, every week we come to church, every Sunday, Wednesday, and it's like every week God just has something new. You know, sometimes we think it, there couldn't be this much new stuff throughout our life, but God always surprises us. It's always week after week after week, and it truly is just a blessing to live for God and just to see the miracles and the amazing things that he's doing in this world. So just thank you guys all for coming out tonight, and um, it truly is a blessing, and I hope that this word does bless you guys. So if you guys could all just bow your heads. Father God, thank you for today. Father, right now I just pray that, that you just come into this room. So Father, right now we welcome your spirit in this place tonight. Father, we welcome your spirit, and we just say, come and do what you want to do, Father. Do whatever you want to do. Say whatever you want to say, Father. We just welcome you in this, this house tonight, Lord, and, and we just say, God, say to us what you want to say, and we will follow, and we will listen. Father, I pray that your words will be mine, and that this message truly does bless somebody here today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So as I was preparing for this message tonight, um, you know, I go in my room, I put my worship music on, and I just started to get in the presence of God. And when it comes to speaking and stuff like this, I get so excited. I can definitely tell that God has called me to do this because I find it fun. So, you know, I'm pacing back and forth in my room with my worship, and I'm like going through my notes, and I'm like, okay, God, we could speak about this, we could do this, and oh, this would work, we could talk about this story, add this verse. And then I had to stop myself. And I had to realize that it's not about what I want to say. I was like, this could fit, this would be good, but it doesn't matter because it's not about what I want to say. So I was like, okay, God, let me stop myself. God, what do you want me to say tonight? And literally what God said to me was, finally, you let me get a word in. <laughs> He's like, you've been rambling on for the past 15, 20 minutes. Finally, now I can get a word in. And exactly that, as I asked him, it was how to hear more from God. And I know this could benefit all of us because we can never get enough of God. We can never hear enough from God. There's always more. And it's always good just to continue to grow. We never want to become stagnant. It's always good to continue to grow and see how, if there's any area that I can increase to hear more from God, then I know I personally want to do so. So it was three ways to hear from God or more from God, and it's important I add that more, because the big distinction, and kind of how God showed it to me, was a lot of people, they hear from God, but it's only, you know, once or twice through the week, or maybe a couple of times, and what God was really centering around this message is to hear more from God, is that God wants to talk to you daily, and I know for me it's a blessing just to be able to go through my day, every day, and just, God, give me that download. God, give me what I need to hear so I can walk on the right path for that day. And so to hop right in, number one is to take time with God. And you guys hear this everywhere. You know, we need to take time with God. We need to take time with God. But it truly is so important. And this is literally the basic, because if you don't take time with God, he can't speak with you. If you're just rushing through your life and you're going day to day and you don't just take that time to slow down and say, okay, God, what are you trying to say to me? Then you won't hear anything from God. And even though sometimes, you know, throughout your life, God will give you some things. If you want to hear more, then you take that time. And something that I really started to think about is there's a lot of people in this world and they say, oh, I take a bullet for my friend. I take a bullet for my family member. And that's literally their life. And I had to think to myself, if someone is willing to take a bullet, take their life for a friend because they love them so much, then we should be willing to take 10, 15 minutes minimum to talk to our Heavenly Father who does so much for us. And, and I'm guilty of this too, don't get me wrong. There's days where I'm just feeling lazy or tired and I'm like, God, I'll talk to you tomorrow. But it's so, it's so important that we strictly take time to talk to God. And, and God kind of elaborated on this and put in the aspect of good versus great. And I guess in this context, it would be having a good relationship with God versus a great relationship. 
And so I personally, I really like to play basketball. Um, you know, I got the height, I got the long arms, I got everything. I really like to play basketball, so God put it to me this way. He said, there's a lot of good basketball players out there, right? And they, they, some, some of them do the bare minimum to be good at the sport, and some of them, they put some work in, but they could do more. And then there's the basketball players that are great. And they're the, the ones that have names for the brands, and you say their name, everybody knows them. They're just like Hall of Fame. They're great. And I had to look at the distinction between this, and it was, you know, the players that are good, they still put in some work to increase and get better at the skill. But the ones that are great, see, they made it a priority. They took time out of every day whether it was their eating habit, working out, putting the shots in, whatever it was, they took every day, they took time every day to contribute to get better at that sport, to get better at what they were doing. And God said this correlates the same way with our relationship with him. See, you can do a little bit. You can read uh, you know, a little bit of the Bible maybe like two times a week, and you can talk to him when you feel like it. But if you want to have a great relationship with God, then you have to contribute. And, and one of the biggest words was prioritize. See, the people that are great at basketball, they love the sport. So they are prioritizing it. And if you truly do love God and you have that desire, see, if you want to have that greater relationship, the increase in hearing from him, then, then we really need to get this time to prioritize and say, okay, I might be busy doing this here, but I have some time here. God... I'm just going to take this time for you to what you want to say to me. And I truly challenge you guys, trust going out through this week. Take 10, 15 minutes, bare minimum. Just read a chapter in the Bible, apply it, and then just talk to God through those that, that, that time. And it's so important that when you do this, though, that you don't just read the chapter super fast, just grace through it, and then just wait for the time to hit 10 minutes. Because if you do that, you're not going to hear anything. But if we truly read, just read a chapter, and you can just go through, and then just try, try to apply it. See what it's saying and try to apply it. And then you just listen to what God has to add on to that. If you try that every day this week, I promise you, you will hear an increase of God speaking to you. And you'll hear an increase in your life. Because as you start to apply these things that God shares with us in the Bible... It helps us throughout our day-to-day -day life, and it's in ways that we don't even realize. And it's so funny because I know for me, God will lead me to places in the Bible that I need in my life. So it's also so important, just, just take time, you know, 10, 15 minutes, and, and that's the minimum. If you guys want to go longer, I know for me, there's nights where I'll be going for hours just in the presence. But if you guys truly take that time, you will hear more from God. And as I was thinking about the time, the time, we look, can look at the story of David in the Bible. And as we look throughout his whole life, David, he was described as a man after God's own heart. And the way that he became like this, it wasn't just from birth, he was a man after God's own heart. See, David, as he was a shepherd, and he was kind of the outcast of the brothers. The other brothers kind of said, oh, we're, you know, physically looking better, so David, you go watch the sheep. And what I realized is David, with his heart, he took time, and he found his relationship with God. And every day, since he was just watching sheep, he had that extra time. So he spent so much time with God, just playing his harp, singing to God, talking to God, that, again, he got that title of a man after God's own heart. But even as we continue to look at his life, when he became king, then he got caught up with war and people coming to him with their struggles and all these things, then he was book solid. He had no extra time. And he lost his time with God. And then his priorities changed and his desires changed. See, then he wasn't satisfied with the presence of God because he no longer had it. Now he, was, he needed satisfaction from other things. Like he went to Bathsheba and he was going after things that he shouldn't and he normally wouldn't but since he lost that time with God, then he lost everything that followed it. And then we know that as David eventually went very downhill, he again went back to God, taking that time. And for him, it was playing the harp. But, you know, that's another thing. When you guys are spending time with God, 
I know that each and every one of us have our own way of doing it. There's no specific way to do it. And I feel like that's what makes it fun and unique. Because if we all did it a certain way, that would just kind of feel like no expanding room. But the fact that you can just go find your own walk with God, your own relationship, and how you best connect with him, then, then it just takes it to a whole nother personal level. That it's not a, a religion of just do it to do it, but it's a relationship that you connect in your own special way. So number two is take authority over your circumstances. And this is a big one that I especially have learned in my life. Because when you just go slack on your circumstances, when you just kind of, oh, I, I need to fix this, but I'll do it later. Or, oh, I need to maybe do this a different way, but that can wait. Then, even without us realizing it, it puts walls between you and God. Because when you stay slack, when you don't set the standard, I think that's one of the most important things. Set the standard. If a person's causing you, you know, causing you to allow things in, in you, to your life that you normally wouldn't allow, then you might have to separate. You might have to move away a little bit. Or maybe if a situation is allowing things in that, that you know you shouldn't be allowing in, then maybe you need to separate because your circumstances, see, then that there's that foothold for Satan to come in. And, and what I've learned is that you have to set the standard. You set the tone. No matter what the world says around us, we're not, we're not following the world. We're not going for what the world's saying. We're saying, I'm following God, and the world's not going to change that. And, and so we look at Ezekiel 37, and verses 1 through 10. So this is a story of, you know, the vision with Ezekiel and the dry bones. So it said, The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord, to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. There were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? O sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. And in that verse right there, Ezekiel knew where the power was. He said, God, you know. And then, then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you li li live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So one of the biggest things here is he said, speak a prophetic message. So basically, Ezekiel was hearing this instruction from the Lord, saying that when you speak, they will become bone to bone and all of these things. But Ezekiel, he couldn't just see it. He had to speak prophetically. And the way this correlates is sometimes if you want to take hold of your circumstances, you can't wait for your circumstances to change. You have to speak prophetically that your circumstances will change. And, and when, you, when you guys really start to understand this, that prophetic, prophetic is, you know, someone saying that it's going to happen. And when we have our faith in God, then we're saying, okay, I got God. I got the, the big guns are coming in. I know my circumstance might look this way. But I know God will turn it, so you, you speak to that mountain. You don't just let that mountain sit there and wait for God to do something about it. You speak to that mountain. And a lot of times, people are forgetting that we have been given the power, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, lives in each and every one of you guys. So there should not be a reason that for a single moment, we just let our circumstances, our, our addictions, our struggles, whatever it may be in your life, that you let it trample you. Because you have authority over it. So, so from this day forward, you better move saying, I trample every plan that the enemy has. And I have the power. I'm speaking prophetically. I may still be struggling, but that's okay. Because I've already spoken that God's got it taken care of. And when you start to activate that, it's like an activation. When you activate that, then when that, that circumstance or whatever it may be, when it comes, you know God's already got it covered. So you know, you're, it's almost like you're laughing. You're laughing because Satan, he's like, oh, let me do my little tactic where I do this and this and this and, you know, get them to think this certain way. But then God comes in because you've already activated. You gave God access to your circumstances. 
And when you've given God access, we know that God has never lost a battle. That is probably one of the most powerful statements. He's never lost a battle, and he never will. So when we put God first in our circumstances, then they're always going to succeed. And God's always got it taken care of. So, again, these are dry bones. These are just dead things. And it says, so I spoke the message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, guess what? There was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscle and flesh formed over the bones. Then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. So again, he spoke prophetically. He was looking at dry bones, speaking to dead, dry bones. But since God commanded him, and, and as we read this passage, that is God giving us the command. That is God giving, and that's why it's so important that we read into his word, because now we know, okay, if it worked for Ezekiel, it's going to work for us. Because it's the word of the Lord. So, so as we see, God's telling each and every one of you guys, just as he said, Ezekiel, speak to these bones. God is saying to each and every one of you guys, speak to your circumstance, speak to your mountain, speak to whatever it may be. And guess what? It, the bodies came together. And it wasn't a week after Ezekiel said it. It says, as he was saying it, as he was saying it, the bones started to come together. There was flesh, tendons, and skin. See, as you start to get up, stop weeping, start, stop putting it off, stop just letting Satan's plan trample over you. As you finally get up and you speak to it, in that moment, that activation, see, the same way that, that the body with the skin and the flesh and all that, your circumstances are going are gonna to start to transform into something great, and something better. They, they, the, the addiction you once had, it's now gone. That the, the crazy thoughts that Satan was putting, they're now gone. The spirits that were tormenting you, they're now gone. Because, because we put in the activation just as God commanded us to. But at the end of that verse, it says, but they still had no breath in them. And then in verse 9, then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds. Breathe these into dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. So again, he spoke. He said, okay, God, it worked for the, the flesh and the skin, so it worked for the breath too. And that's another thing. Once, once you speak to your circumstance... And you see that God actually had you covered. You'll say, okay, God, you had me covered here. So I know you got me covered for any circumstance in the rest of my life. See, sometimes we're, as humans, we're stubborn. Sometimes, and a lot of people, the reason they don't even believe in God, they say, if I can't see him, I don't believe it. But again, if you want to truly see the mighty hand of God, God's, the true power that he has, then just start to activate these things. Because then, again, once you see God move in that, then you know God's got so much power and mercy and, and everything else. And, and another thing it says that, again, they, they were dry bones, but in the end they were a great army. And that right there, it just brought me to the verse that God, you know, he takes what the enemy meant for evil and what? He turns it for our good. So again, you look at those bones and you just say, okay, they're just, just a pile of dry bones. But God said, no, 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 no. Once you start to speak to them, once you start to speak with the power that I am flowing through you, I'm going to turn into a great army. If he could do that with dry bones, imagine what he can do in your life. <laughs> and the third one is be dedicated to God. And this is, this is like taking the first two and then just wrapping it all together. Because we know that, that if you're wishy-washy, if you're, okay, I play church on Sunday, Wednesday, I love God on Sunday, Wednesday, I take notes, but then you don't ever use the notes. <laughs> I took notes on Sundays, but I never actually looked at them ever again. I just took them just to do so in church. But when you're dedicated to God, See, that's when the true change happens. Because we know if you play the fence, there's, there's a lot of times where we play the fence 
with God. But we have to realize that Satan owns the fence. That we might think 50-50, okay, I'm half in, half in with God, but half in, still wanting to do what I want. You have to realize Satan still got you. Because what did God say? He said, if I'm not Lord of all, I'm not Lord at all. And, and that's where, again, the dedication. The only way he can be Lord of all is if we dedicate ourselves to him. And, again, in the story of Paul, right, he started off as Saul. And he was killing Christians. He was going on this crazy warpath, killing Christians. But then, as the mighty hand of God came to him on the road to Damascus, see, this is when God was saying, no, 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 I have a different plan for you. And see, when Paul saw this, he was like, okay, I'm just going to kill Christians. They're all crazy, believing fake stuff. No, 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 no. But then when he saw it, then God said, okay, now I'm going to change your name from Saul to Paul. Because you were walking this way, killing Christians. I'm turning you a whole nother way to where you're going to need a whole name change. All right? But then that was just the beginning. That was just the beginning. See, Paul, he went from killing Christians, which is, you think is crazy. You think is terrible. But, but in the end, he turned out to be one of the most dedicated Christians to God. See, if you want to know, okay, maybe how do I find myself to be as dedicated to God that I really need to be, you can look at Paul. See, Paul didn't care. He said, you can throw me in prison. He said, you can beat me up, but that's not going to stop me. From, from what God has instructed me to do. This is not going to stop me from preaching the gospel, from writing God's word. And in fact, even when they locked him up in prison, he said, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep writing. I'm going to keep going. You can beat me up, do whatever you want. And when you see that level of dedication, where you basically take a step out from the world that you live in, and you say, you know what, I don't care what that world does to me because I'm not here to serve the world. I'm not here to serve the world. I'm not getting my gratification from the world. And in fact, that's what also Paul would experience. See, Paul was rejected by the world. Everywhere he went and preached, and you know, people did come to God, but there was those that, that didn't like him. They are like, no, you're preaching fake stuff. Get out of here. They'd spit at him. They'd probably try to throw rocks and all this crazy stuff. But see, Paul, he wasn't getting his acceptance from the world. If Paul was getting acceptance from the world, he would have stopped after the first time. See, Paul, he could leave being rejected by a whole group of people and still feel like the most accepted, happiest man in the world because he got his acceptance from a higher power. He said, okay, these people reject me. I'm just doing what God instructed me, but God still accepts me. And again, as Paul was so dedicated to God, see, God was talking to him daily. So even if he, if he left a place and, and he just felt like so torn down, see, then as he left, God was just telling him the truth about him. And again, I feel like that's kind of what the world tries to do to us. They try to like twist it, twist the truth. They try to make it to where it sounds half good. And again, that's not the whole opposite of being dedicated. And... And the dedication, you know, it's not like, okay, I need to dedicate 12 out of the 24 hours of a day. It's not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if someone was to, you know, ask you, are you, are you bold about it? Are you, are you willing to do what God wants you to do wherever you are? And I know that I've been tested in this, but it's also so fun. Even, I think it was, what, Monday, we went to 7-Eleven. There was a free Slurpee day. And, um... <laughs> You know, we got to get our free Slurpees. <laughs> and, and something I've learned throughout meeting new friends and just going through life is always just talk to more people. Because when you talk to more people, you get more connections. And God has truly showed me that our lives are truly all about relationships. And my friend Jason and I, we were just getting our Slurpees. And we just like to make jokes. And we'll just say it to random people. Like, <laughs> we don't care. So there's this uh, young guy in there, and we just started making jokes, and we were just talking to him. And then as he was leaving the 7-Eleven, we were just like, bye, Jesus loves you, have a good day. And then he turns around, and he was like, what church you go to? <laughs> and then he came back, and we ended up talking to him for like 30 minutes. We got to pray for him, and just through that, 
he, he has another church he goes to, but, you know, he says he'll watch online. And just through that, it was just like, we can be a witness. We can be a witness just through the little things. That it doesn't have to be just in church. In fact, the, commission, the Great Commission, it's not about being just in church. He said, go out to the whole world. The whole world. He wasn't just talking to missionaries in that verse. He wasn't just, no, he said, everybody, go out to the whole world and share the good news. And, and the greater thing is that you can share what God has done for you. And, and that's what we did. We were just like, oh, yeah, God's been great to us. And we were sharing our ministry. And he was so astonished. In fact, I got his number, and he was texting me afterward. And he was like, I've never seen a teenager do that. He said, I've never seen a teenager do that. And just throughout my whole life. And it kind of shocks me because, for me personally, I'm just trying to be obedient to God and talk to God. But so many people are like, teenagers don't do this. And, and again, it's just, it just makes life so much greater. And, and also, it makes you have so much more peace. And I feel like a lot of times, you, know, you can still have fun and still have peace. You can still go out and enjoy your day and do activities, but still have peace. And again, I feel like that's what Paul had. He had peace. That even though the world was being crazy when he tried to share the gospel, he still had peace. And at the end of the day, when we play that 50-50, half-half, see, then we don't have the peace. And we can go up to God and say, no, but God, you used me to do this. And I, I talked to that one person. I prayed, and I went up to the altar then, and then God will say, depart from me, for I never knew you. And I know that none of us wanna, want that to happen. We want to be full, wholeheartedly in it for God. And so going through these things... How to hear more from God. Again, just truly just take that time and, and just meditate on what God's trying to show you. Sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Sometimes you just sit there in quiet and, and God will show you things. And as I was preparing this message, I was like, okay, God, this is kind of a shorter one. <laughs> Three points, okay, talk about some stories. And then God said, yeah, I know, it is a bit of a shorter one. That's because I want us to start doing it right now. So I was like, oh, okay. So um, if someone could come up and play piano, it's awesome. Yep. <laughs> Forgot to give him the cue. <laughs> but um, again, just going back through the points, um, <laughs> going back through the points of hearing more from God, God said we're going to do it right now. Again, because sometimes we'll write down notes from a sermon, but we don't ever look at it again. We get busy and we just forget. God said, no, 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 no. We're doing it right now. Because we're not going to let Satan get any foothold in this. He said, we're going to activate it right now as a church. And in fact, as I was preparing this, I just remembered this. God actually gave me a word for, for the church. And it was that we come to church Sunday and Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday. And, we just, and we're involved in the other ministries and God said that he's going to move in a mighty way through our church. He said he's about to do something big in our church. It wasn't for someone specific. He said for our church. And he said every Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, and we're just taking in the, the messages and the words and, and the worship. And we're, God said that's all preparation. <laughs> See, you guys think you come to church just, you know, just to keep a relationship with God. No, God said it's preparation. Because he's going to do something big in our church. And, and when he does start to activate it, we'll be ready. We'll be ready. Because he's just been preparing. He's just been doing more and more. So right now, uh, again, going back through that time, uh, if, you, if you ever feel like, you know, maybe, maybe I haven't been spending that much time with God. Maybe, maybe I could do more. Maybe I have haven't been really taking authority of my circumstances. Maybe there's something in my life, or, or maybe you just think that that circumstance popped in your head, or that addiction, or that struggle, or, you know, we all have those things that it just comes to mind. And, and whatever it is, God said, right now, we're just going to take care of it. And as my mom said afterward, um, this cake and ice cream, uh, <laughs> What God showed me was that we're not just going to be eating the cake and ice cream. Oh, happy birthday, Caleb. We're going to be eating cake and ice cream, not 
you know, celebrating just my birthday, but celebrating the freedom that we're about to receive. And that's what it was. It was that we're going to be celebrating because we just walked out of here light. We walked out of here light, and we, we walked out here with a new, a new purpose, a new path. So, so if anybody just wants to take that step, anybody wants to take that step and just say, God, I want to hear more from you. God, I want to hear more from you. Show me, tell me, do whatever you want to do. Could you guys just come up to the altar? And this is, this is between you and God. All right, so don't worry about the person next to you. Don't worry about thinking or saying the right thing. This is just between you and God. And what you're willing to dedicate. If you truly just want to say, God, I just want to dedicate everything. God, I just want to be double sure. I just rededicate everything. God, I want you over every circumstance, over everything. feel the Holy Spirit just moving in this place. Just start to invite him into your heart. In fact, if everyone could just repeat after me, just say, thank you, Jesus, that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And just say it again. Thank you, Jesus, that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Oh, just start to just, just enter the presence of God. Say, thank you, Jesus, that your yoke is easy and your burden is so light. Oh, it's so easy, so easy to enter the presence of God. It's so easy. We don't have to strive. We don't have to push. We don't have to force it because we just come with hearts open and, and God just floods in floods in and I just feel there's someone here tonight that you've just been running for too long. You've been trying to do it your own way for too long and God said no, no, no. God said no, no, no. Just, just open your heart. Open your heart. Just like I was saying, don't let those walls, even the ones that you don't even realize are there, don't let them stop you from just letting the Holy Spirit just really just come and, and just cut those, those chains or, or just show you the path. start to thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just leave everything at your feet, Jesus. Father, we are ready. We are ready for whatever you want to do, Father. This is your space. This is your time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God's showing new pathways, new pathways. Maybe there's some things that you've been unsure about. Maybe there's some things that you're like, God, I don't really know how to go about this. And God said, don't worry about that. See, a lot of times we, 
We worry about what we're supposed to not be doing, but then we forget what we're supposed to do. See, all God wants you to do is just love on him. Just love on him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. thing I love about what we can do here is, you know, we're not afraid. We're not afraid to just dive in. You know, as a church, we're not afraid just to dive in. So, Father, we are just here ready to dive in. Father, as you move, as you move in, in that fire, I just feel fire building, fire building. And we just, whew, the, the tongue just flowing. She da 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mountains are being moved in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, you deserve all the glory and honor. From this day forward, Father, from this day forward, we are your vessels. Come and move, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Your spirit is just resting on us. Our faith is being built. Thank you, Jesus.
Father God, right now as we just put into activation that we want more of you, Father. We are running after more of you, a fresh fire, Father. Thank you for always washing us white as snow. Thank you for never leaving us, even when we tried to run from you. Father, thank you for what you're doing in and through us. And Father, we just, we just want to continue to thank you. Thank you for all your many blessings. Father, right now, I just pray that as we move into this, the rest of our week, that we put you first. We put you first. You are our priority. You are who we're running after. Nothing else, no one else, Father, just you. Father, I pray that, that people just start to just let down any, any wall, any holding back from you, Father. But that when we come into your presence, when we come into your presence, that, that we just give you our all. Father, our all. We don't want to be half-hearted with you, Father, our all. And that people just see the light through us, Father. We want to be vessels of you, Father, of your Holy Spirit. So right now, Father, I just pray that as we move into the rest of this week, boldness, clarity, peace, joy, and a heart of a warrior, because we know that there's, there's an enemy out there and he's trying. <laughs> he's trying, but he's not going to succeed. Because we know where the power is. And Father, we just rest in that. And we will go and move however you lead us, Father.